Hey everyone, today I want to talk about something that has been calling my attention more and more recently, how much I don't know about art. I can confidently say that throughout the years, the 10 plus years that I've been living around art and doing art myself, I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of artists, I've studied art history, I've practiced art myself, different media and all of that. So I, I thought I knew a lot from art, but in recent years, I've been opening my eyes to the unknown and starting to notice some small things that I haven't noticed before. And this is what I want to cover in this video. Really dive deeper into some of the points that really highlighted this idea for me, as well as the overall video be a call out to all of you to really look more, uh, get rid of your preconceived ideas and just look at things in a different way, in a fresh, open-minded way. I'm gonna jump into the avatar concept art that you're seeing in a bit, but today I wanna discuss uh, these topics. So the references and the world around us and how we're looking at that. Artists and their art, I've been really opening my eyes to some amazing artists that weren't on my radar throughout the years. And that has a lot to do with looking at museums differently and modern art to some extent, or impressionists and post-impressionists as well. And finally, real life and some of the studios. Looking at artists, and I, I have talked about this in my recent video on learning from artists' processes and lives and journeys, that it's really important to look beyond just the art and look at the artists, where they lived, how they saw the world and, and all of that. And we can learn a lot from that. And on learning from other people, I really want to hear from you all some of the things that you started looking at differently throughout the years so that we can all learn together. So getting back to the avatar, this is an image by Dylan Cole. He's a production designer uh, on the sequels and recently he posted on his Facebook this image with a description calling out the use of the Traveler Palm as a reference for this. And I looked it up. I haven't heard of this specific palm tree. And it's really interesting to see the direct correlation from the source material, the reference to what he did in this concept art that wasn't turned into final shot in the movie. But it really opened my eyes that there is a lot of vegetation and interesting shapes and things in the world that I haven't seen and that I should look more. Of course, there is the little bits of purple and bluish colors added by the artist there that really emphasize uh, the environment that they are in because Pandora has all these kind of different colors and more vivid blues and, and all and so on. But looking at the source material, I was really, really stoked. And as you're going to see later on, the blue comes back. So some more photos here I gathered from the internet. You can see the way the leaves fan out and some of the more intricate details. So definitely I recommend taking a look, uh, diving deeper into this. I did find a link to a blog, blog post and I'll add it to the description below, really discussing the name Traveler Palm. And that's really interesting as well and start like putting a lot of stories uh, in our minds. The Traveler could be because the leaves tend to find and fit the orientation east-west. So they face east and west. So it's easier for travelers to find their way. So this is awesome. Like if you're creating a story, uh, that's really, really nice. And also it could be because they retain a lot of water. So when you're traveling, you can stop by and get some fresh water from it. It also goes into discussing the relationship between lemurs and the seeds and pollinization and all of that. And you can see the color blue uh, in the seeds as well. So it really connects with what was done for the avatar. And it's super interesting that I have never seen this 
palm tree before, but actually I had, I only didn't notice. So I was walking around my city and I saw one of those and I was like, oh, I have one of those in my city. And once, once I noticed it, I started seeing all around, all around. And I kid you not, like this is the view from the window out of my office. So I have one right next to my office and I had never noticed it. So this is, a, this was a very big call out for me to look more. And I hope it's a call out for you as well. The second area, as I mentioned, is artists and their art. I did a trip to Europe last year and I discovered some amazing artists that I haven't never heard about. The first one is Rembrandt Bugatti. He's the brother from the founder of Bugatti, the car company. And his work, as well as his life story, is really, really interesting. Tragic. His life story is very tragic. I started reading a book on his life, uh, but when I saw this at the Musée d'Orsay, I was really struck by the use of shapes and stylization from someone that was sculpting back in the end of the 19th century. I love animal drawing. I love animal sculpture. Well, this is really, really fresh and it was discovered completely by chance. I entered one of the areas and I was really struck by it. So it called out my attention to some things that I haven't noticed. And one of them is Edouard Villa, part of my French, but he is someone that definitely I saw pieces at the Musée d'Orsay, as well as other museums around Europe. But I didn't notice as much as after when I came back, I looked at this picture and it really struck me. I love Gustav Klimt's art and all that use, intricate use of textures and patterns and all of that. So seeing this was like opening a window to a new world that I haven't seen before. I love this image and all the control of hues, saturation, textures, and composition, details versus areas, breathing room, lost edges versus more hard edges to some extent, not very hard because it, everything connects the details and colors over here, the cold versus warm colors in the same value connected together. It, it's really interesting. We can learn a lot from, from this image. So take your time and absorb some of it. Another example is this drawing by Ilya Repin. I've seen and I've known Ilya's work for a long time, for a lot of years. But I had never seen his drawings. I recently bought a book on his work. And this was one of the first things that struck me. I'm getting more and more interested in the drawings from some of these artists. I bought a book on Sorolia drawings as well during this trip. So it's really interesting to see a more rough, sketchy look that some of these artworks really bring to the table. So once again, look more, dive deeper. And this is really connected to the next topic that I think is one of the most important. Six years ago, I traveled to London and spent 12 days in there. But one of the places that I didn't visit was Tate Modern. I had a very strong preconceived idea about modern art, so I didn't want to like waste some time and go there and all this kind of stuff. And when I came home, I discovered that actually there were two Tate's, Tate Britain and Tate Modern with different collections. And Tate Britain actually 
houses one of the biggest collections of British art from the 19th century, uh, a lot of Turners, and one of my favorite paintings of all, Carnation Lily Lily Rose by John Singer Sargent, as well as two drawings, preparatory drawings for this that you can have access to if you book in advance. I have this painting printed and framed in my living room and I didn't go there. So in this last trip, I booked flights in a way that both going into Europe and going, coming back home, I would have 12 hours overlay in London during the day. So I could try and go there and in one of those be able to see it because sometimes it's not on display. They're going through a lot of renovation. And in the first leg there, I wasn't able to see it. But coming back home, I was finally there, finally able to look at it and take a selfie with that amazing painting. It was an incredible experience. I have saw a lot of amazing artwork. This piece is also there by Waterhouse. As I mentioned before, a big collection of Turner, Amatadema, a lot of 19th century artists from Britain, Lord Lytton, and John Everett Millet, Ophelia, that unfortunately was not on display. The room housing this painting was on renovation, so it will be uh, another time when I get there and get to see this. But one thing that really struck me that I wasn't waiting for was that on my way to the rooms housing the Turner collection, I saw these paintings by Mark Rothko. And specifically, Mark Rothko donated these paintings to the Tate and asked to be in the room next to Turner, which he really admired. So it was the first time I really got some time to look at Rothko. I had this very big preconceived idea that it's just like color over color. But when you look at it up close in the right lighting, in the right size, it really struck me differently. The artwork is an experience when you look at it up close. It's hard to explain for people that just see the pictures on the internet. So I would love to hear if any of you have seen it up close and felt the same. I would really like to go to Tate Modern. So it's funny that now I want to go there as well. And just look at this. This is the collection they have over there, a different room, a different size, potentially a different experience. I even mentioned the color over color situation in my recent video discussing the Count of Monte Cristo by Mitch Schaefer. So it's important to see this artworks in a different way, the subtleties and the overall experience as well. So on your next trip, it could be a local museum. Next, if you live in a big city, you probably have more modern art. Try to look at it a little different. Look at the composition of a Mondrian or the impact of some of these arts, the experimentation with shapes. You can learn a lot, even apply in your realistic figurative work later on. You can learn a lot from these different ways of seeing the world. And going into our last topic discussed here, the artist's journey and their lives, I was really happy to see that here is the Tate Britain. I was really happy to see that right next to it, there was Tite Street 31. That was the studio where Sargent lived the last 24 years of his life and where he died. So a lot of the paintings he did here and stored here. So it, it was a very, very emotional moment of this whole trip to be there, to know that he went in and out those doors a lot of times, that he stayed there. 
So also look at the cities you visit in a different way. They were lived by those people, those artists. They had, they were real human beings that had different aspirations. So look at books from their life and learn more and really let yourself experience the surroundings, the overall place, the culture, and all of that. So I hope this video starts a little spark on your brain to look at the world differently. It could be the references that you use, the artists and the artworks from those artists that you have seen, museum experiences and modern art as a whole, as well as studios, lives and travels from some of the most amazing artists in, in history and how they connected to each other, sometimes studying together, sometimes studying under other masters and so on. This is something that I really want to discuss here in this channel and foster this learning environment as a whole. So please share in the comments what you have learned throughout your journeys, what preconceived ideas you had and now you don't have any more so that we can all learn as a community. Thanks for staying to the end of the video. I'll definitely catch up in other videos and talk soon. Bye.